A sovereign default is the failure or refusal of the government of a sovereign state to pay back its debt in full. Cessation of due payments may either be accompanied by formal declaration of a government not to pay its debts, or it may be unannounced. A credit rating agency will take into account in its gradings capital, interest, extraneous and procedural defaults, failures to abide by the terms of bonds or other debt instruments. Countries have at times escaped the real burden of some of their debt through inflation. This is not default in the usual sense because the debt is honored, albeit with currency of lesser real value. Sometimes governments devalue their currency. This can be done by printing more money to apply toward their own debts, or by ending or altering the convertibility of their currencies into precious metals or foreign currency at fixed rates. Harder to quantify than an interest or capital default, this often is defined as an extraneous or procedural default of terms of the contracts or other instruments. If potential lenders or bond purchasers begin to suspect that a government may fail to pay back its debt, they may demand a high interest rate in compensation for the risk of default. A dramatic rise in the interest rate faced by a government due to fear that it will fail to honor its debt is sometimes called a sovereign debt crisis. Governments may be especially vulnerable to a sovereign debt crisis when they rely on financing through short-term bonds, since this creates a situation of maturity mismatch between their short-term bond financing and the long-term asset value of their tax base. They may also be vulnerable to a sovereign debt crisis due to currency mismatch, if few bonds in their own currency are accepted abroad, and so the country issues mainly foreign denominated bonds, decrease in the value of their own currency can make it prohibitively expensive to pay back their foreign denominated bonds. Since a sovereign government, by definition, controls its own affairs, it cannot be obliged to pay back its debt. Nonetheless, Governments may face severe pressure from lending countries. In a few extreme cases, a major creditor nation, before the establishment of the UN Charter Article II prohibiting use of force by states made threats of war or waged war against a debtor nation for failing to pay back debt to seize assets to enforce its creditors' rights. For example, Britain invaded Egypt in 1882. Other examples include the United States gunboat diplomacy in Venezuela in the mid-1890s and the United States occupation of Haiti beginning in 1915. Today a government which defaults may be widely excluded from further credit, some of its overseas assets may be seized. And it may face political pressure from its own domestic bondholders to pay back its debt. Therefore, governments rarely default on the entire value of their debt. Instead, they often enter into negotiations with their bondholders to agree on a delay or partial reduction of their debt. Some economists have argued that, in the case of acute insolvency crises, it can be advisable for regulators and supranational lenders to preemptively engineer the orderly restructuring of a national euro unregistered trademark as public debt also called orderly default, or controlled default. In the case of Greece, these experts generally believe that a delay in organizing an orderly default would hurt the rest of Europe even more. The International Monetary Fund often lends for sovereign debt restructuring. To ensure that funds will be available to pay the remaining part of the sovereign debt, it has made such loans conditional on acts such as reducing corruption, imposing austerity measures such as reducing non-profitable public sector services, raising the tax take or more rarely suggesting other forms of revenue raising such as nationalization of inept or corrupt but lucrative economic sectors. A recent example is the Greek bailout agreement of May 2010. Causes, according to financial historian Edward Chancellor, past instances of sovereign default have tended to occur under some or all of the following circumstances, a reversal of global capital flows, unwise lending, fraudulent lending, excessive foreign debts, a poor credit history, unproductive lending, rollover risk, weak revenues, rising interest rates, terminal debt. A significant factor in sovereign default is the presence of significant debts owed to foreign investors such as banks who are unable to obtain timely payment via political support from governments, supranational courts or negotiation. The enforcement of creditors' rights against sovereign states is frequently difficult. Such willful defaults can be considered a variety of sovereign theft. This is similar to expropriation. 
Some also believe that sovereign default is a dark side of globalization and capitalism. Equals insolvency over indebtedness of the state equals, if a state, for economic reasons, defaults on its treasury obligations, or is no longer able or willing to handle its debt, liabilities, or to pay the interest on this debt, it faces sovereign default. To declare insolvency, it is sufficient if the state is only able to pay part of its due interest or to clear off only part of the debt. Reasons for this include, massive increases in public debt, declines in employment and therefore tax receipts, government regulation or perceived threats of regulation of financial markets, popular unrest at austerity measures to repay debt fully, sovereign default caused by insolvency historically has always appeared at the end of long years or decades of budget emergency, in which the state has spent more money than it received. This budget balance margin was covered through new indebtedness with national and foreign citizens, banks and states. Equals illiquidity equals, the literature proposes an important distinction between illiquidity and insolvency. A country which temporarily lacks the ability to meet pending interest payments or principal due to no liquid assets is in default because of illiquidity. This default can be solved as soon as the illiquid assets are changed to liquid assets. In contrast to insolvency, illiquidity is a temporary state caused by external market failure. This accounts for the willingness of creditors to provide alternative arrangements for debt repayment. Equals change of government equals, while normally the change of government does not change the responsibility of the state to handle treasury obligations created by earlier governments, nevertheless it can be observed that in revolutionary situations and after a regime change the new government may question the legitimacy of the earlier one, and thus default on those treasury obligations considered odious debt. Important examples are, default of debts of the Bourbon France after the French Revolution, default of bonds through Denmark in 1850, which were issued by the government of Holstein and stated by the German Confederation, default of debts of the Russian Empire after the Soviet government came to power in 1917. Repudiation of debts of the Confederate States of America by the United States after the Civil War through the ratification of Section 4 of the 14th Amendment equals decline of the state equals, with the decline of the state, its obligations are turned over to one or several successor states. Lost wars significantly accelerate sovereign default. Nevertheless, especially after World War II the government debt has increased significantly in many countries even during long-lasting times of peace. While in the beginning debt was quite small, due to compound interest and continued overspending it has increased substantially. Consequences, creditors of the state as well the economy and the citizens of the state are affected by the sovereign default. Equals consequences for creditors equals, the immediate cost to creditors is the loss of principal and interest owed on their loans to the defaulting country. In this case very often there are international negotiations which end in a partial debt cancellation or debt restructuring. This kind of agreement assures the partial repayment when a renunciation slash surrender of a big part of the debt is accepted by the creditor. In the case of the Argentine economic crisis the creditors had to accept the renunciation of up to 75% of the outstanding debts. For the purpose of debts regulation debts can be distinguished by nationality of creditor, or by the currency of the debts as well as whether the foreign creditors are private or state-owned. States are frequently more willing to cancel debts owed to foreign private creditors, unless those creditors have means of retaliation against the state. Equals consequences for state equals, when a state defaults on a debt, the state disposes of its financial obligations debts towards certain creditors. The immediate effect for the state is a reduction in its total debt and a reduction in payments on the interest of that debt. On the other hand, a default can damage the reputation of the state among creditors, which can restrict the ability of the state to obtain credit from the capital market. In some cases foreign lenders may attempt to undermine the monetary sovereignty of the debtor state or even declare war. Equals consequences for the citizen equals, if the individual citizen or corporate citizen is a creditor of the state, then a default by the state can mean a devaluation of their monetary wealth. In addition, the following scenarios can occur in a debtor state from a sovereign default, a banking crisis, as banks have to make write-downs on credits given to the state. 
an economic crisis, as the interior demand will fall and investors withdraw their money, a currency crisis as foreign investors avoid this national economy, citizens of a debtor state might feel the impact indirectly through high unemployment and the decrease of state services and benefits. However, a monetarily sovereign state can take steps to minimize negative consequences, rebalance the economy and foster social economic progress. Solutions With the reputation of the Big Three a Euro Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch Group a Euro coming under fire since the 2008 financial crisis, many have questioned their ratings methods. Mark Joff, a former senior director at Moody's and now principal consultant at Public Sector Credit Solutions, has recently argued that economists and other academic social scientists, via logit and probit econometric models, are better equipped than ratings agencies to assess the default risk of sovereigns and municipalities. To support better ratings methods, PSCS maintains a comprehensive public database of sovereign defaults, revenues, expenditures, debt levels, and debt service costs. PSCS has also developed the Public Sector Credit Framework, an open-source budget simulation model that helps analysts assess default probabilities. Examples of sovereign default, a failure of a nation to meet bond repayments has been seen on many occasions. Philip II of Spain defaulted on debt four times, in 1557, 1560, 1575 and 1596, becoming the first nation in history to declare sovereign default due to rising military costs and the declining value of gold, as it had become increasingly dependent on the revenues flowing in from its mercantile empire in the Americas. This sovereign default threw the German banking houses into chaos and ended the reign of the Fuggers as Spanish financiers. Genoese bankers provided the unwieldy Habsburg system with fluid credit and a dependably regular income. In return the less dependable shipments of American silver were rapidly transferred from Seville to Genoa, to provide capital for further military ventures. The United Kingdom also defaulted in 1822, 1834, 1888 to Euro 83 and 1932, the last time as a consequence of the 1929 banking crisis. In the 1820s, several Latin American countries which had recently entered the bond markets in London defaulted. These same countries frequently defaulted during the 19th century, but the situation was typically rapidly resolved with a renegotiation of loans, including the writing off of some debts. A failure to meet payments became common again in the late 1920s and 1930s. As protectionism by wealthy nations rose and international trade fell specially after the banking crisis of 1929, Countries possessing debts denominated in other currencies found it increasingly difficult to meet terms agreed under more favorable economic conditions. For example, in 1932, Chile's scheduled repayments exceeded the nation's total exports. United States Joint Forces Command warns that huge U.S. debt and other self-inflicted wounds like heavy personal debt on credit cards, students' loans, unaffordable mortgages, early retirement of baby boomers, dependency on food stamps and the welfare system, and an aging and overweight population, might lead to military impotence or default. List of sovereign debt defaults or debt restructuring The following list includes actual sovereign defaults and debt restructuring of independent countries since 1800. Equals African equals, Algeria, Angola, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Kartidva, Gabon, Ghana, Liberia, Madagascar, Mozambique, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Tunisia, Egypt, Kenya, Morocco, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Equals Americas equals, Antigua and Barbuda, Argentina, 2014, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominica, Dominican Republic, 2005, Ecuador, El Salvador, Grenada, Guatemala, Guyana, Honduras, Jamaica, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, United States, 1790, 1798, 1862, 1933, 1971, nine states, ten states and many local governments. Uruguay, Venezuela. 
equals Asia equals China, Japan, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, India, Jordan, Kuwait, Myanmar, Mongolia, the Philippines, Solomon Islands, Sri Lanka, Vietnam. Equals Europe equals Albania, Archduchy of Austria, Austrian Empire, Austria Hungary, Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Denmark, France, Germany, Hesse, Prussia, Schleswig Holstein, Westphalia, Greece, Hungary, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Spain, Sweden, Turkey, Ukraine, United Kingdom, Yugoslavia. See also Asset liability mismatch, sovereign bond, external debt, currency crisis, financial crisis, balance of payments, vulture fund. References Jean Tirole, Financial Crises, Liquidity, and the International Monetary System. Guillermo Carvo, Emerging Capital Markets in Turmoil, Bad Luck or Bad Policy? Barry Icon Green, Financial Crises, and What to Do About Them. Barry Icon Green and Ricardo Hausman, Eds. Other People's Money, Debt Denomination and Financial Instability in Emerging Market Economies. Barry Icon Green and Peter Lindert, Eds. The International Debt Crisis in Historical Perspective, M. Nicholas J. Faisali, Greece and the Roots The EU Debt Crisis. Charles Culinaris, Blueprints for a New Global Financial Architecture. Carmen M. Reinhardt and Kenneth S. Rogoff, this time is different, eight centuries of financial folly. Citations and notes, citations. Notes. External links, list of credit default swap premiums of various countries.